so in the last video we talked about the different types of organisms that live in the water in terms of how they move and where they live. We have benthos, nectons, and plankton. And we also talked about the zones of life in the ocean, including the benthic or pelagic zones. And the benthic zones are divided vertically into sublittoral, bathyal, intertidal, and abyssal and hadal zones. And then the pelagic zones are divided horizontally into neuritic or oceanic, and then vertically into the epipelagic, mesopelagic, bathyopelagic, and abyssopelagic zones. Now, what we also talked about is the important points of this, and here they are, and let's review them again. What the area with the highest productivity per unit area, the highest density of life, and the highest uh, nutrient levels would probably be the sub, uh, the, the nit neuritic zone up here because that's that's where the upwelling will take the nutrients and also continental runoff is going to take nutrients is going to make the water very very rich in nutrients allowing for a lot of algae growth and high productivity and because of that a lot of animals will live here feeding off the algae and then animals that feed off those animals and so forth and so you have a really really healthy food chain sitting on top of the continental shelf and therefore a lot of det det detrovores living in the bottom eating off the food chain that's sinking to the bottom here as well. So you're going to have a lot of detrovores living on the bottom of the benthic zone. So these zones up here will be the highest productive, the most complete, um, uh, dense, pa densely packed food web of the oceans. But it's not the, high, the most productive, period. Because even though it has the highest density of production per unit area, it's smaller compared to this area. This is just a, basically the first 200 miles of ocean or so before you actually hit the continental slope, which, uh, which is called the bathyal zone or the mesopelagic or bathopelagic waters are going to be involved in there. Now, in here, uh, you're already starting to get to the deeper waters, and so the, the production is going down. But the epipelagic zone is still the photic zone. And even though you have less nutrients, you will still have an algae here, an algae there. And so... Even though the algae is less densely packed, you still have algae living in the photic zone of the open oceans. And so, because the open oceans cover most of the world, over 70% of the world is covered with open oceans, the majority of the photosynthesis of the oxygen production, of the sugar production of the world, will be happening in the open oceans. The only difference is that this will be not be densely packed, and so it's hard for life forms to find that algae in the open oceans. So they prefer to go to the neuritic zone to eat. In fact, things like whales will always swim into the continents in order to eat or uh, breathe before they actually go back into the open water to give birth and so, and so forth. And they would do that because that's more likely for their babies to survive out there in the open water where there's less people, less predators and so forth. But the majority of things like sharks, fish, everything is going to be concentrated in the neuritic zone because that's where most of the life is. Now, some fish will actually live out in the oceanic zone and they'll either live out of the neuritic zone by going back and forth or they will live off a food chain that's oceanic zone based. But those food chains will be, will be much less densely packed because, because of the uh, um, productivity level of the density of the productivity is not as high. Now, however, remember it's still the highest productivity in general because it's so so large. Now, the area with the least population density or the, where less people are living would be probably the either the bath bathypelagic or the abyssic pelagic waters, where basically anyone living here will either have to feed off the detrovores that live in the bottom of the ocean, or they will have to go all the way up to feed off the top of the water. And so this is going to find very little life swimming around in the waters deep here in the aphotic deep water zones. And so these are the, and also absolutely, the least productivity will be in the abyssal pelagic zone, which is too far from the light. Now, the abyssal and hadal zones actually has a lot of nutrients. In fact, it's in, at places or at times, the abyssal and hadal zones will actually have even more nutrients than the neuritic zone will have because everything that dies in the open water will eventually sink to the bottom and will be consumed by detrovores and decomposers living in the abyssal and hadal zones. And so those benthic zones will actually be nutrient-rich. And you also have some productivity happening there because you have chemotrophs, which are special types of autotrophs that live off of chemical reactions of near volcanic vents or deep waters and, and very high acidic waters or high, high uh, salt, salty waters. And these, uh, 
uh, organisms can actually perform some production. And so you will have some production in the actual abyssal and the zones, but not in the actual water of the abyssal pelagic zones. And so these two zones, the bathypelagic and the abyssal pelagic, are the deepest zones of the ocean, and therefore also the uh, least, and also really far from the sunlight, and therefore the lowest productivity and the least amount of people living in those areas. Now, the area that sees the greatest change in biotic fact, abiotic factors throughout day and night will have to be the sublitteral zone. So, sorry, the littoral zone or the intertidal zone because it's sometimes above, sometimes below water. Now, let's actually look at some pictures of these zones. Now, here you see it again, the, the basic uh, uh, breakdown of those areas. And you can see the intertidal zone. And then you see the continental shelf where the... Um, Sublitteral zone or, or the neuritic zone, if you're talking about pelagic zones. Then you have the bathyal zone, the abyssal zone, and the hadal zone. So you see this very same uh, uh, breakdown of the other part. But remember that you can also refer to oceanic zones in terms of the water zones. And those are called pelagic. And you have the neuritic, which is sitting on the top of the continental shelf. And that's the very nutrient rich, high density packed, high productivity per unit area. And you have the oceanic zones. Now, vertically, you also split them up into these photic zones. Or the aphotic zones. The photic zone is called the um, apipelagic, and then you have the mesopelagic, and then sitting under that, you're going to have the bathypelagic and the abyssopelagic zones, which was where least life, least productivity is going to be found. Now, if you look at the intertidal zone, that's what's going to be sometimes above water, sometimes below water. So, during the highest low tide. That means these are the people who are going to be always underwater. And then you have the highest high tide over here. And then you have some people which are living right on top of that. And they're just basically the animals that feed off the water that's sprayed because of the waves. But they're naturally not really ever underwater. And then you're going to have more animals in between. And notice that up here you're going to have most shell organisms. And down here you're going to have most soft body organisms and algae. And see, this is the intertidal zone, and you see the examples here on the board of things which will be there, like mussels and algae and bottom dwellers and things like that. It's mostly benthic animals. You won't see a lot of uh, fish here, obviously, because it's sometimes they'll be over above water, sometimes underwater, and so not a lot of fish. But you will see a lot of molluscs and a lot of uh, cephalopods and a lot of algae and things like that. Okay, then you have the neuritic zone, and you see how uh, this is the... the Sorry, the sublitteral zone. This is the benthic zone that's underneath the continental shelf. And so it's going to have a lot, a lot of life and things like coral reefs if the water is nutrient poor, like we talked about, and you see some of those there. And this is the sublitteral zones, which are going to be full and full rich of life. Things like coral and things like that. And a lot of fish are going to be living off these things as well. Okay? And then you have the, bat, the, the, the benthic zones of the abyssal plains, or the slope, which are called the bathyal zones, and even the hadal zones. And you see that living here, what you have mostly is sand dollars and bottom dwellers and cephalopods and things like that. And these are the things that live in the oceanic floor. So you see them here. And there's going to be a lot of life living here because there's going to be a lot of nutrients because of all the dead stuff that sinks to the bottom of the ocean. And so we know that. And then you have the pelagic zones, which are the open ocean zones. And this actually refers to the neuritic zone, which is the open ocean, but near the continent. So that means that the actually sitting on top of the continental shelf, and you will see skulls of fish. You see a lot of human activity in those areas, things like cruises and things like that. And you'll see a lot, a lot of fish in these areas. And these are the areas that people can actually fish out of because there's going to be uh, more uh, life forms coming out to actually feed off the nutrients which are going to be rich in these waters and so there's going to be a lot of algae and a lot of algae eaters a lot of plankton and therefore a lot of food chain a really rich food chain living in this area and then you have the open oceanic pelagic zones including the apipelagic the mesopelagic the abyssopelagic uh, um, and the bathic pelagic zones and then you have you still have fish but you have you're going to have less fish and the majority of these fish will be fish that are either feed off of the neuritic zone uh, food chains or or feed off the very poor uh, oceanic food chains uh, which things like algae and uh, large fish will also live there and you, you find a lot of large animals living in the abyssal pelagic and the bathic pelagic zone because they have stored energy for long periods of time and then when they want to eat they will just go up and feed off the epipelagic or the neuritic zones and so that is the oceanic zones of the ocean water 
Now, for, for the last video, we're going to have to focus on oceanic resources, and we'll pick it up from there on the last video that we have to talk about.